Hello, my name is Andy. And I am the Village Idiot. And I'm armed with a car and a GoPro. And an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to West Lindsay. And today you find me starting this one outside a church, which is very unique in the fact that it serves this village, but it's not within its parish boundaries. And I'll explain why it's not within its parish boundaries, but I'm still doing it as we progress through the parish of Morton. Today in West Lindsay, we're to the north of Gainsborough for the first time. Our route begins and ends on Front Street, or at least I thought it did. So I've literally just had to check Google Maps here to make sure that I wasn't talking complete and utter rubbish. Have a look at this. I've always known this as Front Street. It seems to be known now as Morton Front, and even Google Maps says it's called Front Street. Has it changed its name? Morton is sometimes known as Morton by Gainsborough, presumably to distinguish it from other places with the same name, including another Morton in Lincolnshire near Bourne in South Kesteven. Morton's population at the 2011 census was 1,325. We're only one mile north of Gainsborough here. In fact, you can't get much closer to the town than here. The border between the two can often be a little blurred. It's another village alongside the River Trent. I'm going to warn you now, the next few villages in this series all follow the Trent to the north. Morton is listed in the Doomsday Book as More Tune, at the time only having four households. It's certainly grown a bit since then. It was a township of Gainsborough Parish until 1846, when the first church dedicated to St Paul opened here. The church then became a chapelry until 1866 when Morton was created its own separate civil parish. The name Morton comes from the Old English Moor and Tun, which, much like Morton in Derbyshire, translated to farmstead on the moor or marsh. In 1871, the principal landowner was Mrs Tennyson Danecourt of Morton Hall, who was Lady of the Manor. From 1900 through 1913, the principal landowner was Sir Hickman Beckett Bacon, Baronet of Thonock Hall. Thonock is a neighbouring parish to Morton, which we'll meet soon, and compared to this place, it's a whole different ball game. The village is described in Kelly's 1913 directory of Lincolnshire as picturesque and as a northern suburb of Gainsborough, but that's not really the case. So in much the same way as Lee, Morton is another village which is right next to Gainsborough. In fact, you wouldn't really know where the join is. Although later when we walk down Front Street, I will point out that join to you. Morton is just like Lee in the regard that it's a village, it's not a suburb. A survey of residents in 2018 resulted in a majority of those that took part in it expressing a desire to keep Morton as a village with its close connections to the rural area it borders onto. Morton and Gainsborough have always been closely associated though. The parish register dates from 1847. In early entries, Mortons are interspersed with Gainsboroughs and individuals would most often be said to be of Gainsborough or of Morton. So here at the northernmost point of my walk on Walkerith Road, if you were to walk a bit further that way, you'd come to a nursery, which I'll mention now. I'll put it in the picture bit because my plans don't involve walking up there. They involve walking back to the south. Notable people associated with Morton include Major Thomas Kelsey, who was a resident of this parish in 1930, living in Southland's house. In August 1886, he'd been appointed as Lieutenant to the 1st Volunteer Battalion of the Lincolnshire Regiment. He died in 1941. 
One piece of wartime history Morton is noted for would be the Morton Gimes disaster in 1915, a dark day in the history of D Company of the 4th Battalion King's own Yorkshire Light Infantry. Morton had Gimes, effectively ponds, on which the battalion practiced raft building. Some 40 men were on board a raft when it tipped over, plunging them into cold deep water wearing heavy clothes and equipment. Seven would not survive. The area around Front Street is by far the oldest part of the village. Most of the properties here date back to at least the 1800s. Dog and Duck Lane refers to drovers who would herd their sheep, geese and ducks to market via this route, presumably with the aid of a dog. Throughout history, the village forged its own sense of purpose in the local area, in the main because of the local industrial activity in Gainsborough and farming in the surrounding countryside. Chapel Lane refers to one of the three chapels Morton used to have. The Wesleyan Methodist built a chapel on this lane in 1840. The Primitive Methodist had two buildings, one on Cross Street founded in 1841 and a replacement on Dug and Duck Lane founded in 1893. All three are now closed. And author George Eliot provides a literary connection to Morton. He wrote the novel The Mill on the Floss while staying here and the fictional St Ogg's in the book is based on the village. I wonder what the demographics of the place were like when he was here. Nowadays, Morton's population density is 395.4, 99.5% of the residents here are white British, and the average house here can be yours for £205,000. Okay, so we're on Front Street here, and this is where the join between Gainsborough and Morton is, the border. Front Street is the border. However, there's a, a, an unusual quirk about this border, and that is that it runs along that side of the road for some of the way and as a result St Paul's Church which is here is not actually in Morton it's actually in Gainsborough but do you really think I'm going to save this for the Gainsborough episode? No. Amenity section now we'll start with the parish church This Grade 2 listed church is dedicated to St Paul. The current building dates from 1890 and 1891 and was built to the designs of J.T. Micklethwaite and Summers Clark. It incorporates the tower of the original church consecrated in 1846, which appears to have been refaced. The width of the 1840s church decided the width of the nave of the current church. An 1890 and 91 building campaign was largely financed by Sir Hickman Beckett Bacon at a cost of £11,000. The church includes a chapel to St Hugh off the South Isle. Of note is the chancel carpet, designed by William Morris, and the some stained glass windows by Burn Jones. Morton School was originally built in 1843, and in 1985 it moved to its current location near Morton Playing Fields. It took its present name of Morton Trentside in September 1999. Although only separated from Gainsborough by the width of a road, Morton continues to develop its own sense of community. It does this through the Village Hall, which has plenty of annual village events. There's a number of bus services through the village. Here are two of the many listed on this sign. There are some school services here as well as public ones. Morton Manor is now a care home. It's a red brick, grade two listed building dating from the mid 18th century with later alterations and additions. And here is the second care home I caught on my route around the village, Elliot House, named after George Elliot. There's a Lincolnshire co-op food store on Front Street or Morton Front, depending on which you want to call it. And that brings us to pubs. One of the most striking buildings in Morton is the Ship Inn, which as a local I can tell you has gone through a lot of changes over the past 30 years. For one, it never used to be a light blue colour. In the picture bit, you'll see what I mean. Now as well as the Ship Inn, Morton used to have a second pub called the Crooked Billet, but unfortunately it's gone guys. Anybody who knows Morton, hasn't seen it for a while, this is the former Crooked Billet pub and as you can see it's now a premier store. And to be honest with you, I'm quite disappointed because the Crooked Billet is a pub that I frequented 
quite a lot in my youth <laughs> and uh, I was looking forward to seeing it again but unfortunately it's gone Now to Mill Lane where there's a former mill which has now been converted into a private house there's no conservation area or any scheduled monuments in Morton, but the mill, known officially as the Mill at Gainsborough Laundry, is one of nine listed buildings in the village. A tower mill, this is early 19th century and made of red brick. It's a five-storey tapering tower and is quite simply unmissable. There are clues close by as to what else would have stood here at one time. The mill is behind Granary Close. So in itself, the village sign here at the village hall is quite the landmark itself. So we've got the village hall marks on there, the crooked billet, the mill on the floss. I think that's the school in the top right corner. There's a long boat. And I can't see what that is. Is that the ship in? Yes, yeah, the ship in. And running through the entire thing, we have the River Trent. That's quite cool. This is Morton Corner. These days there's no wharf, but you can catch something called an ager here, a tidal bore which can be seen at certain times of the year. And this ties in with the mill on the floss. Marsden's Lincolnshire suggests that the ager took its name from a Norse god, Ogre the Terrible, and it makes reference to a St. Ogs in its text. There was also a floss mill here too, a water mill which is believed to have been the inspiration for Dollcote Mill in the novel. Floss Mill Lane is close by to the old wharf. Okay, that's the main walk around Morton completed. Time to give you guys a picture of it. And here that comes right now. here in West Lindsay. Now the next one I'm going to is very small. In fact the next few you'll see in this district are very very tiny villages and they won't take very long to film and to produce at all. Uh, we're working our way up the River Trent on the eastern side towards where it borders North Lincolnshire. But for now this has been the Parish of Morton and I've been Andy also known as the Village Idiot and I'm out. Mm -hmm.